testing. What's up, Rule? We'll give everyone a minute just to join up. There's out of lock. There we go. Spend some energy quick, then we'll get rolling. Yeah, definitely lots of new stuff, tons of new stuff in ships. One sec. All right, let's get rolling. All right, so we're going to play buff, nerf, or draw when it comes to ship abilities. If you haven't played buff, nerf, or draw before, don't worry, neither have I. I haven't checked out the titles yet, Roll. I was too busy eating pancakes. I had to make pancakes after work. Fun story, so I make my pancakes with almond milk. I was cooking them up and I was eating them as they were coming off. And then I took a swig of the almond milk and I realized that the almond milk was going bad. But pancake batter was already made, so too late. Couldn't taste it in the batter. All right, so here's what we're going to do with the ships. We're going to review each ship's abilities, give them a rating, win, lose, or draw. Um, buff, nerf, or draw. I can't tell their offense, um, their HP protection, stuff like that. It looks like that was changed a little bit too. So some may have got stronger, some may have got weaker. Early testing, it looked like Millennium Falcon. Got a nice buff to protection health can't confirm that because I don't know what the previous ones were but let's get rolling all right so we're just going to start at the top and we're going to go down again we're going to look at the abilities if they got big changes to attack defense protection HP stuff like that I don't have anything to compare to we'll let the game changers do that we'll let the guys that get paid to do this do that we're just going to give these a rating. There's definitely some combos here. I think there's a turn meter removal combo with some of the reinforcements on there. That's a little too advanced for this. That's going to take some testing to find out. But let's start off. Let's get rolling. All right. We're going to look at all max abilities. All right. So protection up. Gains three stacks of thrust reversal. Thrust reversal got changed a little bit. Used to be you could... You use the basic attack, you got 100% turn meter. Now it gets counter chance 
on there. He still uses the one thrust reversal on the basic attack, and it only gives 50% turn meter. So they added counter chance. Helps if I go to eight there. Um, the 50% protection, I believe that is new on there. So I like that change. Dispel all buffs on Millennium Falcon. Um, I don't think that changed at all. That AoE is still really strong. I don't think that changed. I don't think that changed on there. Still the same. So far, pretty similar here. This one is a little bit new um, because it no longer loses the thrust reversal stacks when it gets damaged, which is a big change there. Um, so it used to be if they got thrust reversal, then you hit them with uh, first order TIE Fighter Pilot, get that double attack on them or remove those pretty quickly. Those can no longer be removed like that. So the reinforcement here, if we look, it starts off with three stacks of thrust reversal on there and it's still got that 100% counter chance. So you can literally bring that straight in since they get the 100% turn meter. You can use that AOE right away with those three stacks of thrust reversal if you want. Or you can just use the basic. It'll lose one. It's going to get you 50% turn meter. And then it's going to have that counter chance as well. So Millennium Falcon, we are going to give that a buff. I like that reinforcement ability a lot. I like that coming off of the bench on there. So that was already a pretty good ship. It was it was a glass can for sure. Except when I was facing it earlier, it looked like it got buffed for protection and health, but I can't confirm that. All right, Tie Reaper, probably the most annoying ship in the game. If I was one of the first ones to start running it, loved it on there, um, but also hated it once everyone else started running it because it's just such a cheap ship. That's easy to screw up on YouTube. I was excited about the ship rework because I've literally been running the same starting five for what, six months? And, and almost everyone else is running it. Maybe they sub out one ship. Usually you see Vader subbed out for Biggs or sometimes Millennium Falcon in the starting five. So let's have a look. Physical damage, dispel all buffs. Decrease to cooldowns by one, remove 50% turn meter, deals more damage. That, I believe, is the exact same. Gain defense up, protection up for two turns. If that allies Empire, they receive an additional 20% protection up. If that changed, it didn't change much. Offense down, it's basic. On there. All right. The enemy capital ship loses 12% turn meter. Whoops. Loses 15% turn meter whenever any ship is defeated, which can't be resisted. I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that used to be 30% turn meter. If that is the case, that is an absolute huge nerf to this ship because yes, it's got the dispel, which is nice for taunts and retribution, but that was its biggest thing was if you got it rolling, they may never, their capital ship may never take a turn. You might kill all five ships before they even move on there. Um, Aaron, a woodchuck, woodchuck out of the wood, a woodchuck, 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 Get that out there real quick. Let's look at the reinforcement bonus. Remove 10% turn meter from all enemies. Inflict defense down to all enemies for two turns. All allies gain 10% turn meter. I like the reinforcement bonus on there. That's a 20% turn meter switch on there. I like that. I think there could be some combos out there that people are going to discover with turn meter and reinforcements on there. But overall, I'm going to give Ty Reaper a big nerf. That capital ship. Again, someone please correct me if I'm wrong. I might just be talking out to my rear, but I believe that used to be 30% on there. D Money agrees that was a huge nerf, so yeah, I think that was 30%. All right. Uh, the ship so far, what I've played, um, I'm not a big fan so far. The battles actually take longer. I did a full auto battle. It still took me two minutes to win. They reduced it to five minutes, but that used to be a lot faster. And some of the battles I was manually doing, checking them out, I mean, it was like a minute and a half before I won. I was seeing Thrawn get off two of his ultis to kill ships. It feels like ships either have more protection, more health, or they just don't hit nearly as hard on there. There's no more taking out 
their first shit before they even move. It, it seems like they have a lot more health on there. All right, so, so far we have a buff and a nerf. Kylo Ren's command shuttle, very, not a very commonly used ship on there. 100% terminator advantage for one turn and their cooldowns are reduced by one, but they lose 35% protection. Whoops, let's go to eight. Uh, that changes to 20% protection on there. I think that's the same. That's always been a good one to use on TIE Fighter Pilot. 40% That one is pretty similar. I think, I don't think anything changed on that one. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't use this ship much. I think that's probably pretty. Yep, yep. same stuff, the speed. You have the plus 20 speed, let's, let's crank it up to eight. Ow, Yub, I have it on Do Not Disturb. You're killing me. All right, let's look at his reinforcements. Nothing special about this one so far. From enemy ships when they are called in as reinforcements. Kylo Ren's command shuttle gains 20% turn when an enemy reinforcement. All right, so I like this reinforcement quite a bit. The reason I like that is because everyone knows when ships come in, they gain that 100% turn meter, so they get to take a turn right away. This prevents them from doing that. So some fun stuff on there. I mean, if they're calling Scimitar in, you'd think it's going to go on Biggs, for instance. You can target like Biggs so that maybe Vader can then get rid of that Retribution early. I like that. I don't think it's a huge thing, but I like it. Overall, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle, we're going to give a draw. I like the reinforcement bonus. I just, the ship was never used before. I don't know if that reinforcement bonus is good for it. Um, Yub has a question. Why is my voice so smooth on there? Um, I have a lot of experience speaking on the phone. I had a meeting the other day. I worked from home, for those that don't know, and the guy that held the meeting used to be, or he went to college to be an MC. That was crazy. Like, he straight sounded like a DJ. It was pretty hilarious on there. So, so far, buff, nerf, draw. Phantom 2, I looked at this one a little bit. You can see my Phoenix is very last lacking. It'd be a long time before I could use this ship on there. Um, target lock on target enemy for two turns. 70% chance also flick target on a... If it can't be Vader resisted. I, th I don't think that changed much if it did. Ones that I don't... Don't jump out at me change. We're just going to kind of skim through. Target enemy has 70%. All allies critical chance. That one is the exact same. They might have messed with the percentage. Whoops. Wrong click. 50% chance to gain advantage. Foresight. 60% chance to gain advantage. Defense up, foresight, offense up, and speed up for two turns at the end of, of its turn. The ghost also has this ability. That definitely changed. There used to be something about the ghost couldn't be critical hits and all that stuff. So that's, that's interesting. Well, it has no protection. It used to have very little health. But my Phoenix are also very lacking. So someone with level of Phoenix, tell me that is high Kratix. I hope I said that right. Gain stealth for two turns. That's the same, I think. Yep, I believe that's the same. And so I like this. It gains stealth advantage and offense up for two turns and reduces the cooldown of call reinforcement on the allied capital ship by one. So you're going to be able to call more reinforcements. I'll read that in a second, Kratix, on there. Um, if you haven't noticed, if you haven't played much ships yet, reinforcements get called left and right. So reducing the cooldown on that one could be good on there. So, for Phantom, we're going to give it a buff. Kratix says he fought a Kylo Command. It was very tough breaking through its protection. It was getting it on every retribution attack. So, we gave it a draw. Maybe we'll change that to a buff as it goes. We'll have to see on there. Cassian's Ewing, this is a ship that used to see a lot. I'm sorry, that was Bistan's Ewing. This ship, I've never really seen get much play. Special damage target enemy call, target allied assist, additional 30% critical damage. 
guaranteed to be critical hits. That's nice. Don't know if that changed. Don't know if about the ship. I apologize. Stealth for three turns seems like it was higher than it was before. Did it used to be two on seven? Nope, still three. Double target allies, rebel. I wish I knew wrong button. I wish I knew more about this ship. I believe that's similar on there. Who cares? 30% huh, counter chance. 60% counter chance. I believe that's new. Correct me if I'm wrong. You never used the ship. Critical avoidance, 25% defense when attack by target allies. Bonuses are doubled for rebel allies. So 50% critical avoidance. So I like the dispel all buffs. Um, I just think that with... There's only three ships at a time now instead of five. There's not nearly as many ships to give those buffs to. The offense down and defense down, especially the, the offense down is nice, but fives does that anyway on his basic on there. I'm going to give Cassian's. This may get changed to a buff, but we're going to give that a draw on there. I still don't see it getting any play. I don't know much, enough about it beforehand, but I didn't see anything that really jumped out at me. Scimitar, the most popular reinforcement in the game. Should be. All right. Protection up, retribution, and they also gain critical human hit immunity for two turns. So that's new just for the level eight on there. All other allies gain stealth for two turns. Now, wait a minute. That's really new. Oh, no, sorry. They've always gained stealth. That one doesn't gain stealth on there. So the critical hit immunity, if you're putting it on a Sith on there, to be honest, in the past, you almost always put this one on TIE Fighter Pilot just so he could dodge like a maniac. I don't think you're going to be putting on TIE Fighter Pilot anymore. We'll talk about that later. That's critical hit immunity if, if they're Sith. That, I don't think that's really that big of a deal. Stealth, remove 80% turn meter and stealth. That's pretty much the same. I think that's the exact same. That's the flex target lock on them. Whoops, let's click on the eight. anything crazy change. More offense, big whoop. 25% critical chance until he's defeated. Double for Sith allies. Scimitar was already such a good ship. You were already bringing him in on reinforcements anyway. The plus 25 critical chance is nice. Um, so that's going to be a slight buff for him. But we're going to we're going to move that. We're going to call that a draw. Because you were already using him. You're probably not going to stop using him. And it's not anything crazy. Plus 25 critical chance. It's good. For Sith allies, 50%. It's good for someone that you were already bringing off the bench most likely anyway. So that's a slight buff. We're going to move it into the draw category there. Tie advanced, the Veda. Ability block a target enemy for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted, which is a lie. Oh, eight makes it evaded or resisted. That's nice because so many times you hit bigs with that, so he can't do his double attack on your bigs, and he resisted. So eights unlocks that it can can't be evaded or resisted. I like that. Target lock dispel all buffs remove 100% turn meter. That was already the way it was, I do believe. Yep. Flick two damage with that same plus 30% damage. Nice that that's a big boost to his basic on there. Yep, 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 same, 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 plus 5% turn meter gain. That's all that really changed there whenever they target a target locked enemy. Inflict three damage over time effects and offense down on all enemies for two turns, which can't be evaded. So the offense down is very nice there. The damage over time is a little tricky. And what I mean is you can use it trickily, trickily. I used it... Um, to kill one of their ships. So I brought in Vader, and instead of actually targeting him, I knew he had a dot on him, so he was going to die his next turn. 
so then I could target another ship. So it kind of freed up a free attack there. The downside there is that then they gained a little bit of protection, so it didn't work. They I had to wait a turn for them to die. I like the offense down on all enemies. I think that's powerful. Um, overall, we're going to give Vader a draw. I'm using him right now. Currently, I'm using him in the starting three just to give bigs, um, make sure I get bigs with the taunts. I'm not saying we're always going to use bigs on there, and we'll see. That may change from the starting three, but... All right, Boba. I think anyone who saw the kind of read about the ships at all knows where this one's going to be. All right. I don't think anything changed there. Whoops. Let's check the eight. More damage. Big whoop. And 55 cents. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. I think that's pretty much the same. Plus 15% target lock chance. This move... So I was using Boba a lot today. This move feels like it does no damage whatsoever anymore. Um, I used it twice on the same ship, and I couldn't even barely tell that it dented them. It was fives, so he might have had his health buffed a bunch. But it deals 30% of their maximum health. So if I use it twice on him, I should definitely notice a big dent in his health. Um, I know Yub probably just failed calculus, but that's 60% there, Yub. All right. That's whoop, pretty much the same. Reinforcement bonus. This is where Boba shines. He gains a taunt. He gains retribution, and he gains protection up for two turns. At the max, he gains critical hit immunity for three turns. And he inflicts ability block on the target enemy for one turn, which can't be evaded or resisted when he comes into play. Boba Fett Slave one that is a huge buff biggest buff we've seen so far run boba off of your bench absolutely so far could change but it's been big so far it's nice to have another tank he's also a tank that hits hard he's not the tankiest ship in there but really before we had bigs and sunfac now we have boba run him off reinforcements he does good work um, scimitar is still important to try to avoid the Bobas and to avoid the Millennium Falcons. It's like a Biggs, arguably the best ship in the game, just because everyone used him. Ah, appreciate that, Eerie. <laughs> Going after the subscribers. What are we up to now? Like 27? All right, so. Who are we looking at? Biggs. Talk about color and model line to assist. He gets plus 30% damage. Nothing new there. This attack has plus 5% critical chance for each rebel ally. That's that's new. That's going to help him land those target locks if you upgrade that one and you actually have some rebels out there. So that's a little bit of a buff for the bigster. We've come close. We have nicknames. 20% protection and taunts for two turns whenever an enemy becomes target locked. So it used to be 35. Now it's 40% on there. Did that used to be that high? I feel like that wasn't that high, as high as that anymore. Uh, Biggs off the bench. Gains protection up for two turns. Inflict target lock or target enemy for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. So this is fun, because even off the bench, he's going to immediately, tar he's going to immediately taunt, because he's going to be target locking someone. So he's going to give himself protection up 30% for two turns, and then he's going to inflict target lock, which should is going to give him a refill on protection. Right. Yeah. It. It. So that one. That won't come into play, because that's a recovery, not a protection up. So he'll target lock. He'll taunt immediately after that. So he, that's. Do your run bigs off the bench? That's really. It becomes the question, if we can keep a ship from dying, before the reinforcements. Because remember, now the reinforcements have. A one turn cooldown, so you can't call reinforcements your first turn anymore on there. Ships do seem to die slower, so we might be able to be bringing Biggs off the bench for one of those reinforcements because he's going to instant taunt with that target lock if that works properly. So we're going to give Biggs the Bigster, we're going to give him a draw just because you're still using him the exact same way that you were, but you might start using him as a reinforcement. We'll have to see. 
could change to a buff. Definitely not a nerf. Imperial TIE Fighter. Everyone's favorite ship. Grant 25% turn meter to the Allied Capital Ship when this ship evades an attack. This effect is doubled for Empire Capital Ships. So this is absolutely huge right here when he evades. That's 50% to Thrawn or Tarkin. That's an absolutely huge ability. Seems incredibly overpowered, but we'll get to why it's not. I don't think it is. If his damage target emits, 70% chance to inflict target lock. Same. Gains four sights. Inflict buff immunity for three turns. Whoops. Quick D8. Dummy. Oh, just 30% damage. Damage is nice on there. Reinforcement bonus. Moves 50% turn from target enemy, which can't be evaded or resisted. That is almost a negative because chances are that target enemy is going to be a taunter. So you're causing them to taunt longer. So I really don't like that at all. But here's the big thing you did not see on Imperial TIE Fighter. Does he still have his evasion chance? Where's evasion? Where is it? Dodge chance. Increase the chance. His dodge chance went way down. He used to have 40% evasion on there. So he still got a good dodge on there, but he's not like what he was where he dodged everything. Deflection is same as special ability. So 24.67% on there, unless giving him a Zeta greatly increases that. I th he still doesn't have protection. His health, I don't know what it was before. 83,000. It feels like that may have gotten a buff there. The 50% is awesome at level 8 when you're using Tarkin or Thrawn. It's absolutely incredible. But his evasion went down on there. I don't like his reinforcement bonus at all. In there, I'm going to give Imperial TIE Fighter a nerf. I'm documenting it. I'm putting it in the books. That's a nerf, I think, because his evasion went down. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that used to be 40, 45%. Or if you were trying to hit him, it was over 6,000%. Um, Eerie, I tend to agree with you on that. I don't mind that I have to... I'm sorry, I'm reading GroupMe. If you're not in GroupMe, I, <laughs> I apologize. I don't mind having to click to get the reinforcements because then I get to see what their reinforcement bonus is. may get annoying once I know all of them, but for right now... I don't mind it at all. F O T F. Strafe's cooldown is refreshed. He does more damage on strafe, which is ridiculous, plus 30% damage. That's nice. Strafe already hit incredibly hard. Physical damage 50% chance to. I don't care. 50% chance to attack again. Um, so he's got a plus 15% multi attack chance and a plus 5% target lock chance. That's nice. Basic stuff here. Gains 15% turn meter whenever in a target lock and damage by attack. That's up from 10%. Very nice. And reinforcement bonus. Two turns can't be evaded. Just all allies gain 50% turn meter. That's not bad. 15% turn meter for a reinforcement bonus on there. First order TIE fighter pilots. Still, I think you're going to use them in the starting lineup for now. I think this one is a draw. I like the 30% extra damage on there. I like the multi-attack chance, but he doesn't do anything crazy that he didn't used to do. He was a really good ship. It seems like unless other ships become really, really good or damage no longer matters, he's going to continue to be a really good ship. So that one is a draw. Rex. I was really hoping Rex got a buff. Like I used to run Rex's ship way back in the day. Because I had Rex and his ship was good. All right, 50% turn meter, recover 15% protection, reduced by one Galactic Republic Alley. I don't think anything's different there. Target many inflict target lock for two turns if they have no buffs or debuffs. Otherwise, remove 20% turn meter. It's plus 10% turn meter reduction. Fun story about this ability is it gets resisted like 
I, I don't know, like Akbar gets ability block. It's resisted all the time. I, if if they had put, if they had made eight there, if they had said target lock can't be resisted, then Rex, I would say, would be a huge buff. But that target lock gets resisted more often than it hits, it seems like. All right. Galactic Republic allies have 10% tenacity. Whenever an ally resists a buff, all the Galactic Republic allies recover 15% protection. Nothing new there. The only time that's probably useful is if you're attacking someone, their Rex is attacking you because you'll resist the target lock from Rex. Reinforcement bonus is last chance. Grant all allies a buff for two turns based on their roll. Defense up, health up, critical chance up. This is basically Thrawn's uh, special over again. It's all right. The defense up doesn't seem to matter too much on tanks. I mean, it helps. Health up. Again, ships have been known to die so fast. If they die slower, the health up could help. Critical chance up, sure. I'm going to give Rex. I'm disappointed in this. Rex is a draw. He might actually even be... He's not nerfed for sure, but he might be a nerf compared to how many ships... I think weaker ships are going to get better that he got moved farther down in the lineup from what I see. All right. How many? Okay, we don't have that that many left. All right, Yub, I'll look at it in a sec. Sunfak, our only other tank in the game. What's Yub have to say? Okay, Yub says TIE Fighter was, his dodge chance was 47.42%. Good call, Yub. Yub's got my back. So yeah, I stand by that even though he's got the 50% uh, turn meter gain to Empire Capital Ships if he dodges, I'm going to call that a nerf. I mean, that's a 20%, 20 plus percent loss in dodge chance. That sucks. Because as we all know, that 47% is close enough to 50 that they rounded it up to 75%. So that 27% is close enough to 25. They might just round it down to 10 or 0. And your base chance is 15% anyway, so that's really only 10% above base. Good call out, Yub. You're my boy, Yub. Sorry about the calculus. All right. Sunfac used to see play, doesn't see a whole lot of play anymore. Physical damage, target enemy, if he's buffed something for one turn, it just can't be resisted. I like that can't be resisted added in there. That's really nice on someone like Boba or anyone who has Restribution. But what I don't like is that it doesn't say can't be evaded. We should said can't be evaded as well. I think that's a miss. Tag on a turn. Also, if the target lock for two turns, plus 30% damage. Instead of the 30% damage, I would have rather have seen like a 15% damage and that target lock can't be resisted. Because he doesn't do that much damage anyway. And his attack out of turn is obviously with uh, the other Geos. All right, when he's active, all of the allies gain 10% critical avoidance for each active Geonosian ally, which is three. So 30% critical avoidance. There's only three Geos, right? Poggle doesn't have a ship. I'm trying to think if they snuck one in on the next Pyro dude will be telling me that Gamorrean Guard should be a Geo. That's why he's going to form him. <laughs> in addition, whenever a buffed enemy starts their turn, he gains 30% turn meter, 60% defense, and taunt until the end, end of that turn on there. Um, so he got a nice boost to his turn meter gain, to his defense on there. Nothing crazy there. Same one. And stun target enemy for one turn, which can't be evaded resistance. Remove 15% turn meter from all other enemies. It does not say can't be evaded resisted on the turn meter removal, though. I wish it did, but... All right, so he can stun an enemy when he comes into play, which is probably going to be a tank, which is probably going to be Bobo. It's probably going to have Retribution on there. Um, kind of silly that then he's his special did kind of the exact same thing, but with the remove 15% turn meter from all other enema, en, enemas. Yes, he removes turn meter from enemas. With that, I am going to give Sunfac a buff. And I think we're going to see some other stuff from Geospy and Geo Soldier that may make him buffier. Buffier, the Vampire Slayer. All right, Wedge. Wedge sees no play. No play, Wedge. The Bigster gets all the all the girls. He gets all the play. Or whatever species, if they're male, female, we don't want to assume. All right, deal physical damage to target enemy 
This attack ignores armor. It deals 20% bonus damage for each debuff. So it got the ignores armor. It's always hit hard, but they need debuffs. Took like damage over time for two turns. An additional and a critical hit. The dots are not that strong. All right. All right. Pyro must have heard his name. We'll be with you in a moment, Pyro. All right. Gets 25% terminator attacks out of turn. Why does it attack out of turn? Plus 15% speed and plus 15% critical chance for each enemy that is buffed. That's kind of cool on there, but when does he attack at a turn? When when Biggs calls him? Why doesn't... Well, it should be just like... Um, just like the characters. If the character's target locked, if Biggs uses his special, he calls Wedge and another random ally. Come on, CG. Get on it. You've you've given him attack out of turn abilities, and Biggs doesn't call him. I don't think Biggs calls him, for sure. Not that I saw. And flick buff immunity heal immunity on target enemy for three turns, which can't be resisted. Cool. It's it's cool. Buff immunity, healing immunity, that's cool. The thing is, is that when he comes in, you're probably targeting a tank. They probably already have taunts. So yeah, you hit him with healing immunity. But the buff immunity does nothing. Wedge gets a big fat draw. Pyro says Gamgard is already 7 star. Well, yeah, he's been in Guild Store for so long. That makes sense. Alright. Good call, Aaron. Good call. We haven't even gotten to Capital Ship. So Aaron points out, anytime Akbar's ship uses its primary or AoE. Fantastic call. I'll be honest, kind of forgot about Akbar's ship. We're going to look at the Capital Ship, see if those changed. Kind of forgot about that. Um, just because everyone runs Thrawn or Tarkin if you don't have Thrawn. Oops. Poe. Poe was a disappointing ship. He was like the original pay ship on there because he had his pack, everything like that. He's always been bugged. He's supposed to never be dodged when if the, they don't have protection. So he should be like a TFP counter. That doesn't work. I don't know if they fixed that or not. One bug I know, at least I say it's a bug. Thrawn's ultimate is supposed to lower or raise all the cooldowns of the enemy capital ship by one. That's not fixed. I saw it today. Used the ultimate. Then they called in a reinforcement right away. Um, somebody in my ship shard said they thought reinforcements worked differently than cooldowns. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't care if that's the way it's supposed to be. It still doesn't make any sense to me. It's still on a cooldown. So that bug wasn't fixed. Don't know if Poe's bug where he misses was fixed. Target enemy of this attack can't be evaded and always scores a critical hit against enemies without protection. Liars! May have been fixed. Days the target for two turns. I think that's the same. Offense up. I believe that's the same. He gains more protection, more turn meter for level 8. Reinforcement bonus. So this is interesting. He gets dramatic entrance for two turns, which can't be prevented or dispelled. Gives him plus 25% offense. Deal bonus damage equal to 10% of the target's max health. Gain 20% turn meter and regain dramatic entrance for two turns after defeating an enemy while this buff is active. So it's kind of like Boba's thing, except for he can be killed, but he gets he gets it right back on there. But it, if you lose it, you can't get it back. I would say it's cool, but Poe has always been a pretty big glass cannon, and he's been a glass cannon that doesn't hit that hard. So we really have to know... If he got more HP, if he got more, if he, he attacks harder. So I'm going to give Poe a draw. That could change. Could change if, if, it, if stats changed, but so far, no. Ghost, I looked at Ghost a little bit. I like the Ghost Phantom combo on there. They gain stealth for three turns. This has always been a good one to use on Millennium Falcon. That gives them one more buff for their AoE, and then they can't get hit from their stacks. They can't lose their stacks because they're getting hit. A little bit different now because they don't lose their stacks when they hit instead they get the counter chance, so it kind of ruins that whole combo. Target ally and two rebel allies called to assist, dealing 40% less damage on there. You could call Wedge. <laughs> All right, nothing new there. And bonus percent to all enemies and deal 40% bonus damage for each rebel ally. Flip for ability block for one turn. So that could be ability block on multiple people if they're target locked. Um, that could hit very, very hard. I don't have my ghost leveled up enough to ever use, so 
Target enemy that goes stealth attacks guaranteed to be a critical hit plus 30% damage. Nothing new there. 25% potency. We'll use that on Rex and he'll actually give you buffs. His potency is so low. Enemy to buff is resisted by an ally. Ghost inflicts speed down on the enemy for two turns. This effect can't be resisted, which makes sense. Phantom 2 is present. The ghost cannot be target locked. Phantom 2 is defeated. Ghost gains protection up for two turns and 100% defense until the end of the battle. Not bad. Wrong button. Not bad. I like that. So defense down on all enemies for two turns is not bad. Help if I went to eight. She can't be evaded. That's cool. Doesn't say it can't be resisted, though, which is stupid. Well, they just put them together. Suppose target enemy two turns can't be evaded or resisted. Gains 30% turn meter for each debuffed enemy. So I get to go again quickly. Reinforcement. Critical chance down. So this reinforcement I actually like quite a bit um, in the right setup. Critical chance down on all enemies for two turns. Inflict target lock on all enemies who suffer from that critical chance down, which can't be evaded or resisted. So they can resist the critical chance down, but if they get that, they can't resist the target lock on there. If you're running the bigster and he's hurting, that's going to fill his protection up right quick on there. Plus make him retaunt as long as he doesn't have buff immunity. We're going to give Ghost a buff. I think there's some combos there with Ghost and Phantom on there. Again, this is not a little too early to start looking at the combos on there, but I, th I think there be, could be some cool stuff there. I like the fact that I think this will shake up the meta. meta. Like I said, I've been running the same sh five starting ships for like six months. Jedi Consular, I ran him back in the beginning. I still sub him in every now and then. 70% protection if that ally is Republic, they recover an additional 30% protection um that's a lot of protection on there that's a hundred percent protection to someone like biggs on there so i like it I, I like that move a lot i feel good about that move his thing has always kind of been that after he uses his two specials he doesn't do anything because his basic attack is so worthless 70 percent chance to gain two defense up for two turns grants another random ally so he's still a support Target ally to assist. Gain protection up for 6% for two turns. So it gets a little bit more damage there. Reinforcement bonus. All allies recover 40% protection. I like it. I like that one. It's not the strongest thing. But for what he does, he's a support ship. We're going to give Jedi Counselor a buff. You got the 100% on Galactic Rebel. Galactic allies. And then you give all of them 40% protection. That's going to be a buff. Ahsoka, Bake's been talking about Ahsoka. I read her a little bit. He likes her on there, so I think she's going to be above. And uh, Pyro, I haven't got to the capital ships yet. He's asking if Akbar's ship looks roughly the same. Um, I don't know if they change capital ships. I'll get to those. I haven't looked at those at all. All right. Dispel all debuffs, 50%. Gain protection, 50%. If they were spelled this way, and her and all of the DBF have allies gain retribution for two turns. What? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let's back it up. We need to read that again slower. Dispel all debuffs on Ahsoka Starfighter and gain protection up 50% for two turns. Okay. If any debuffs were dispelled this way, Ahsoka Starfighter and all other debuffed allies gain retribution for two turns. Wow. If they don't have Scimitar up, you're just going to smoke them. There you go. You put that on Wedge, he gets to attack out of turn. Boom. Steak dinner. I like that. I think that's... With, with how prevalent debuffs are, I think that's a massive buff to Ahsoka. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but it's definitely, I think, a big buff over to what she was. 70% chance to gain offense up for two turns. Grant another random ally offense up for two turns. She gets more damage. I like it. Didn't she used to give people evasion up? Yeah, she used to give herself evasion up and give somebody else evasion up. Because it was always funny to put on um, TIE Fighter Pilot if you used her on there. So that may have changed. Talking to me and spell all debuffs on them. That's normal. This build is cooldowns reset, and the Silk Starfighter gains 50% turn meter whenever an enemy reinforces. I don't remember the turn meter gain, but it's been a while since I used her, but it being reset 
There's normal on there, she gets more damage. Let's look at her reinforcement. Spell all buffs and target many gain 20% max health for each buff dispelled. That's really good. They've got the boba. You bring in the fulcrum. She wasn't even fulcrum yet, she was Ahsoka. I just heard the back in my ear because there's a five second delay. It sounded really stupid, my apologies. All right, so get rid of his taunt, get rid of his retribution, any other buffs he has, and then she gets max health, not like health up, She's coming in max health. Ahsoka, one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Huge buff. Awesome. I like that. Baked was right. Like I said, I'd read it a little bit on there. He said she was he was having good luck with her. Good call, Baked. Good call. All right. Geo Soldier. We saw the Geos get kind of demonstrated when they were doing their little thing, so we thought the Geos were going to get some stuff. So let's look at Geo Soldier. I looked at him a little bit. All right, target enemy, call a random ally to assist. Inflict evasion down for three turns if that ally is separatist. Don't really care if they're separatist. The evasion down, unless you're fighting TIE Fighter Pilot. Meh. Both attackers gain 50% offense for this attack. That's nice. I think that's like the exact same as it used to be, though. Target enemy remove 20% turn meter doubled against buffed enemies. Um, that's I think that's pretty much the same, if I remember right. On there, not good against taunters, that's for sure. All Geonosian allies have gained plus 10% accuracy for each active Geonosian ally. So 30% accuracy. Shuts down TIE Fighter Pilot. I don't really care about it other than that. So 35% chance to assist, dealing 20% less damage whenever an ally uses an ability during this turn. This chance is doubled for Separatist allies. So these guys are kind of like the first order. So he's got a 70% chance to assist on there. Um, if a Geo is attacking, dealing 20% less damage. He didn't deal a ton of damage before, so... Reinforcement gains offense up for two turns and gains an additional plus 30% offense on his next attack. I like that one. I like it a lot. We're going to give Geo Soldier a buff. He wasn't much before. He could get annoying if he assisted a lot. That reinforcement bonus, that's, that's a strong hit. Not only does he have offense up, but he has another 30% wonder if I have group me announcements on. Kind of want to vid bomb. I, those are new to Sanchi. Nice try. Does my girlfriend listen to you making these videos and laugh her ass off? She's actually sleeping on there. Uh, time to gear up Ahsoka. I would agree with that. Against Thrawn's rebuff AoE. That could be hilarious. Uh, Ahsoka's the big winner. Winner. Beans dinner. Aha. Beans. He worked it in there. I like it. There. Sorry. Reading group me. Back to Soldier. That's a huge hit. If he's got any kind of offense at all, that's a big hit. I like that. Geo Soldier gets a buff. The only thing I don't like is my favorite kind of thing about him is his reinforcement on there. And I think the idea is that you run those Geos in pairs. In pairs. All three of them, that's a pair in my world. I, I didn't fail a calculus like Yub did, but apparently I'm still not very good at math. That's the second calculus Yub comments. Boom, racking them up. Uh it's going to be hard to run all three of them at the same time if you're pulling them on reinforcements. I expect Separatist rework soon. I expect we'll see more Geonosians. I'm burning. Fives. I don't use fives anymore because, you know, his gear level is, what is that, eight, nine, and his gear blows, but I know a lot of people still do. I replaced him for Vader a long time ago. Fighting him early on, he seems like he's better now, but let's look at the tape. Two turns, target enemy, she can't be resisted. Physical damage, she's target lock enemy, this attack deals plus 20, blah, blah, blah. That's the exact same. Uh, dispel it buffs on target enemy, that's the exact same. Deals more damage. Gain 30% turn meter. Additionally, when he attacks, he gains 5% offense and loses 5%. Really? Huh. Oh, 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 oh. That's interesting. Uh, that's interesting because he obviously attacks a lot because he gains that 30% turn meter on there. So, I mean, he attacks more. His speed isn't that bad. And he's always been one of those guys that was impossible to take down but didn't do much other than do the offense down on that. Um, the gain 5% offense stacking is interesting. But why don't... I don't see that he inflicts... Oh, there it is. The offense down and defense down. I'm like, if they took that away, that's a huge nerf. Okay, that's still there. I just skipped past it because it was the same. 
Move 20 percent turning from all enemies. What? Hot. Huh? Just can't be evaded. Can still be resisted, though. Grant all allies 20 defense up for two turns. Then inflict a target lock on all enemies with 0% turn meter, which can't be evaded or resisted. Oh, crap. We're going to have to move him past gear 9. That's good. 25% turn meter gone. Can't be evaded. It can be resisted, sure, on there. But defense up to two turns for everyone. And then if they've got target lock, or inflict target lock on them, if they have 0% turn meter, which can't be evaded or resisted. So if you remove their turn meter, you got him down to zero, he inflicts target lock, then he comes in, he uses his target lock special that was 20% more for everyone that's target locked. I hate it. I don't like it at all. He's gear nine. His gear sucks. It's Carbonti heaven. I'm busy working on Treya. Fives. That is a buff for an already good ship. Ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. I'm not, I'm not happy about it. I don't want to gear fives. <laughs> All right, Clone Sergeant. I don't know the first thing about him. I only use his ship. Um, never. Territory Wars, that's about it. Defense damage, target enemy, can't be evaded. Scores critical hit. Recover 20% protection. This attack is going to be guaranteed to be a critical hit. 30% damage. I don't know if he used to have the 20% protection thing, but that's kind of cool. Um, doubled on a critical hit, so he has a 100% chance to target lock if he crits. Cool. Means defense up for two turns and recover 65% protection. Yeah, all the Republic guys are like that with the Rexes on there. They have a lot of health. They're hard to take down, but they don't do a whole lot. Let's see if the reinforcement bonus gains protection up. And Taunts, while he has protection. Really? Really? So we another taunter. You know what? Anytime we have a taunt in ships, because tanks are so low on there, we're going to give that a buff. The Sarge. I wish... Yeah, I mean, he's the Sarge. He should be better on there. Da, da, da. E Bizzle is enjoying me reading all the stuff for him. Yeah, I figured... Nobody wanted to click through this stuff on there because I certainly didn't. So one, it's entertaining for me to read it while I'm doing it. And two, that way you guys don't have to click through it if you don't want. Okay. Resistance X-Wing, you might be able to tell. I don't use him much. He's gear eight, which is perfectly fine for the resistance team because they're so ridiculous with a fin lead that... All right, two turns, 55% chance. So let's expose them for two turns. Expose target enemy for two turns if there's another active resistance ally. I think that's the same. It's something like that. Exposed target for two turns. Big whoop. Spell all buffs on target enemy. That's nice. Days target enemy. I think I remember seeing that. To another random enemy. It can't be evaded or resisted. So, not bad. Let's look at the reinforcement bonus though. 40% chance to assist, dealing 30% less damage whenever an ally uses a basic attack during their turn. This chance is doubled for resistance allies. So he's got an 80% chance to assist, but I don't remember that he hit very hard. Let's look. Who's our resistance allies? And I unclicked it. Idiot. Poe, Millennium. There's not enough resistance allies, I don't think, to, to really care about that. Is there? X-Wing, resistance. We're going to give a draw. Um, he's slightly better. I just don't really see that you're going to use him. Maybe if we get more resistance. Plo Koon. J Dollar's favorites. All allies gain 40% turn meter. All Galactic Republic allies gain health up and protection recharge 45% for two turns. That's really good. I mean, 40% turn meter and they gain health up and protection recharge. It's not a protection buff, so if they're already at full protection, they don't get it. But 45% protection back, I mean, that's good. I think that's pretty similar. It's always been good. Target enemy, he's got a 70% chance to gain protection up for two turns. Grant another ally, random ally protection up. Yeah, it's his basic. I mean, he doesn't hit or for anything, but spell all debuffs and target ally, grant them taunt to protection up for two turns. And the new one, the Republic, grant them critical hit immunity for two turns. That's good. That's good. Because you know who's Republic? Biggs is Republic on there. I know a lot of this taunt is based around Biggs, and we don't not even for sure that Biggs is going to stay like that guy. But it seems very likely 
on there that Biggs is going to be one of your main taunters, so that's good. Now the reinforcement bonus. I sneak peeked at this one. Boom. <laughs> all right. Dispel all debuffs from all allies, and they recover 40% health. And 40% protection. Plo Koon finally giving the recognition he deserves as a pilot. If you saw Clone Wars, Plo Koon was the man. Plo Koon. That's a buff. That's a huge buff. That's with a capital B, a capital U, and one capital F, maybe two capital Fs. Plo Koon, big buff. Pull him off the bench. That's big. I mean, we'll see. Maybe he doesn't get play because maybe... Ships take longer now that we need more offense to kill them quicker. And somebody that just buffs them when they're already hard to take down isn't that worth it. But, I mean, on paper, that's a big buff. Stan. Used to get play. Used to be really annoying. Haven't seen him around for a while. Target lock target enemy for two turns. Can't be evaded or resisted. Cool. He gains stealth for two turns. 30% turn meter. If he's already stealthy, he gains offense up for two turns. He's got plus 50% turn meter gain chance on that one. Seems similar. Here's the problem. I mean, if you're running like the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder really weak so that he dies a lot, like maybe, you know, to boost Asajj or Daka, it's tough to tough to level the ship. And, you know, just the fact that both characters kind of suck, it's tough to level the ship. Got plus 25% speed whenever an enemy comes target locked. Another random ally gets 35% turn meter advantage for two turns. Yeah, I mean, that his opening move, his opening salvo is kind of stupid on there because he's got that plus 25% speed. He goes first. Then he target locks, and then everyone else gets to go first. So he's always been a pretty good ship. Uh, can't be evaded. If he's stealth, it's 20% critical damage and ignores defense. Gains 50% turn meter. And he also gains that much turn meter. Reinforcement bonus. Gains stealth for two turns and calls a random ally to assist when he comes into play. So he gains stealth, and he does stuff if he already has stealth. He's already stealthy gains offense up for two turns. So he's going to come into play with stealth. He's going to gain offense up when he comes into play. Um, oh, I'm sorry. He's let me go to eight. So he's going to kind of, kind of, going to come into play with stealth. Then he's going to inflict target lock on a target enemy for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. He's going to gain 30% turn meter. And if he already had stealth, which he will, he had gains 30% offense on there. So not bad. He calls a random line to assist. I'm, I'm going to give Bistan because he does pretty similar stuff. That's kind of a cool reinforcement bonus. It seems situational on there, but I'm going to give him a draw. If you hear my cat squeaking in the background, yeah, she wants attention. So you guys come first on there. And uh, my group me sideways. I'm trying to read. Oh, calm down. But yeah, I was preoccupied with Plo Koon. Calm down, Harky. Is it Harky or Hark? Let's go back. Sorry, my group me sideways. So I'm trying to read it sideways. The iPad is not rotating. Back to the beating. All right, Ty Silencer. I know a lot of you guys love this. I haven't really used him because I haven't leveled or I haven't put any gear on my Unmasked Kylo. It's damaged or damaged as a target lock. Enemy gains 10% turn meter, 50% offense stacking. So he gets that boof. That's, I know that's what makes him hit extremely hard. Target means stun them for one turn if they have more than 50% turn meter. That's good. And if the Ty Silencer has advantage, this attack deals 100% more damage. Like defeats an enemy, gain 20% turn meter, foresight for two turns. Cool. What's his reinforcement bonus? Ooh, it's long. He gains 25% at offense, and so he was already he already hit hard. And but now he's got afterburner. His cooldowns but one. Whenever first order ally takes damage, he has a 50% damage. Uh who's our first order? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, you're not seeing a lot of play, except for maybe FOTP. I've seen First Order SF TIE Fighter in there. Um, I'm going to give, a couple of you guys might not like this, I'm going to give TIE Silencer a draw because he basically does the same thing that he did before he comes in and he punishes people when they get target locked. Doesn't mean that's not bad at all. Still seems pretty good. 
My goal is to break 200k with his new buffs, Yub says. That's quite possible. Yub says he's a beast. Um, Pyro wishes that Sarge was heavy. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I've got love for the generic characters as well, though. Yub thinks I suck because I did not give him a buff. I mean, he was already good on there when it comes to Ty Silencer. I know you already like him. All right. Moving on. First Order SF TIE Fighter. Target enemy, inflict ability block for one turn, call target ally to assist, do 50% of that damage, give them advantage for two turns, cool. Attack scores critical hit, inflict target lock, cool. 25% critical chance. I don't see target lock couldn't be evaded or resisted there, so, and, you know, when it comes to that, I want that it can't be resisted. Tie damage over time affects all of the ships for two turns, which can't be resisted. Well, theirs are can't be resisted. So, I mean, to all other ships. To all other ships. So, he deals damage to the enemies and applies a DOT to all other ships? Meaning every ship except for himself? Or meaning every ship that isn't an enemy? I'm going to guess every ship that isn't himself. Um, is there a is there a bonus to certain allies having a DOT? Like, does Kylo have gets? I haven't seen anything on Kylo stuff that says he gets stuff like DOTs, like he does. Uh, his actual character does. Interesting. Huh. Oh, maybe somebody can explain that one to me, but I don't really get it. And it's, it reads to me that he applies a dot to every ship that isn't him. Why? All allies gain 40% potency, double for first order allies, so 80% potency. All active enemies have minus 20% tenacity, doubled against resistance enemies. Meh, you know, it's got more potency. That's cool. I guess that's kind of like saying that your target locks can't be resisted. Um, we don't see a lot of first order ships on there, and we don't see a lot of resistance enemies. So FOTS 964200, we're going to give you a draw. Ooh, we're almost done. Good, because I'm out of water. Uh, you can tell how much I care about this ship and care about these two turds in general. So sorry about the lack of platoons. Don't care about these two turds. Other 16 Cantina Energy Farms, somebody else can do that. Bones and J Dollars are all over that. All right, dispel all debuffs on all allies, grant the protection up 30% for two turns, doubled for Empire allies. I mean, that's a cool ability. It's not a terrible ship. Just don't see it. Target enemy inflict buff immunity for two turns. Good if they're not taunting and they're, they can taunt. All right, screen another iron. Random ally, 25% terminator. All right, so he's fast. 20% speed and gains additional 15 speed for plus 20 speed, not percent. Gains an additional plus 15 speed for each other active Empire ally. Additionally, it grants 25% defense to all allies, doubled for Empire allies. Not bad. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? All allies recover 30% protection, and Empire allies gain 30% max protection. He's coming off. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to envision it. He's coming off there. He's coming off the reinforcements. Um, what's 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 his first move that he can do? Buff immunity. They probably got a taunt. We don't care about that. Uh, grant the protection opportunity. But there we go. There we go. So he comes in. He gives them plus thirty percent protection. He gives the Empire ones plus thirty percent max protection on there, and then he grants them protection up on there, which is doubled for Empire allies on there when he uses that move first. Gar Gauntlet Gauntlet Starfighter, you get a buff. I will post these in the description um, of the YouTube video or at the end here, so you can go back and look at these if you want, or maybe I'll just throw them and group me. Probably just group me. That sounds better. Geo Spy, I think, um, was it Arnold that does the rankings? Might have had this ranked the worst ship in the game. Love you too, Yub. Okay. Special damage target enemy inflict defense down for two turns. Call all other separatist allies to assist. Was that that way before? That's kind of cool. 
Uh, Geo hits hard. Sunfact traditionally hits like a tank. We imagine a tank would hit. On it. But this guy's thing was always kind of like his stealth. So let's see. Target I mean, this attack deals 50% damage to buffed enemies. Yeah, most enemies are buffed, so. She inspires five starfighters active. So every Geo soldier has a thing that affects all other Geo soldiers with a plus 10% something. So, or every Geo ship. So if we see more Geo ships, that could definitely think. Thing is, we we really liked Geo Soldier's reinforcement ability. To take full advantage of this, you need to be running all three in your starting lineup. So they gain 10% offense. Addition is 20%, 30% critical damage while stealth, and 25% evasion while out of stealth. When he takes damage, him and Geo Soldier Starfighter gain stealth for one turn. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So he stealths the Geo. The glass cannons get the stealth whenever he takes damage. Intriguing. Reinforcement bonus. Grant taunt to target enemy and another random enemy without taunt for two turns, which can't be resisted. i am be honest. I don't understand this one at all. I don't get it. I, I don't like it. I just realized that that costs 525,000 ship credits. So their plan when they said they were going to, everyone said they're going to rework ships and they're going to get us all to spend all our ship credits on mods. Yes, that's exactly what happened. 525,000 ship credits is ridiculous, especially when you just want to experiment to see how things work. That's insane. People are going to be upset about that. I don't understand that reinforcement. Somebody in group me, please, please explain that to me. You give them taunt. I mean, so you, you give them a, a buff? I mean, I guess if you want to kill them and your guy has retribution, they're all going to direct that to that ship, but but then if you give another one taunt a random enemy, then you don't know which way it's going to it's it's going to go. Uh, Yuri, I just saw your comment. The dude is clueless. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want to be in his guild. Congratulations. You've been promoted to guildless. I'm just kidding. Alright. I, I, don't, I don't get that at all. But... We are going to give GeoSpy a buff. So let's look at our Geos. I know what's his face got a buff. We listed Sunfak as a buff, so that's three buffs. All three Geos got buffs, according to our very scientific list. All right, let's look. Feed target enemy, deal damage to all remaining enemies equals 40%. Spell debuffs and target enemy. That's the exact same as it always was. It's still broken. It does not increase all cooldowns on the enemy capital ship by one. Because if it did, that would literally mean that they could not call reinforcement the very next turn after I use that on them. The fact that they can means that it does not increase all their cooldowns by one. It's very simple. <laughs> they should only be able to use a basic attack. Only. No reinforcements. Target allies called to assist with plus 50% offense. Yeah, it's the same, I think. They are always called to assist. I assume they had offense, more offense. 35% turn meter. Wait, what? So that's new. Yeah. So inflict speed down for two turns on enemy, enemies that evaded or resist this attack. So that level 8 there. Is now. Whoops. Click the same thing again. What's up, Pyro? Ah, so you put you put taunt on another enemy to get around Big's taunts. Okay. Screwed up part is I don't think you'll be able to target who you want to. Then you're relying on random chance. I I can understand that, but. I guess my thing that I'm thinking on there is that if you're calling in reinforcements, Biggs is already dead or almost dead on there. So I guess you can get around Boba's retribution. That's a good point. I mean, that makes sense. Should have thought of that. I still don't like it on there. Why not just why not just give him a dispel then? Wouldn't that have dispelled be better? I feel like there's something coming or there's something I don't see yet that you deal more damage to taunted enemies or something like that. Mm -hmm. Pyro says, I'm assuming that Biggs is already taunting. That would force you to be, uh, you to only be able to target him. Right? Yes, you'd have to target him with the taunt, but then you could give it to a random enemy. 
Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, if they're already taunting, you give it to a random enemy, and then you have to hit that enemy, and that enemy could have Retribution or Nuke Face McNukerson, to where if you hit them, they blow up and kill your whole team. I mean, it's not really a thing yet, but who knows? I'm just saying, I don't like that ability. All right. 40% critical damage. Double on Empire Allies. 15% critical chance. Enemy is defeated. All allies gain 10% to mass speed. Blah, blah, blah. Critical chance up for two turns. I think that's the same, right? All right. 50% health and gain. Ooh, a 20% heal on that one. That, uh... Oh. He already had that. Yeah, because he already has those things. Why haven't I been doing these? These are new, aren't they? I didn't just miss all these. These are new. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I didn't just forget to magically do all these. I think they were maxed before. Akbar. So did so they unlocked their abilities, so let's see what they changed. Ten percent critical damage up, fifty percent protection up. Thirty percent damage on there. 30% damage, not bad. Oh, they gain 100% turn meter now. Okay, okay, okay. Still, that's still a matter of, that's not like a game changer like Tarkin's is, or even Thrawn's. The Thrawn's, I don't think, is as powerful as it once was, just because you're calling reinforcements so often. Um, my issue with Thrawn now is, with the lack of TIE Fighter Pilot, and the nerf to... Gauntlet, if you're running Thrawn, one, if you don't have both Zetas on him, then the other team is probably going to get to kill one of your ships first. They're going to get their ulti first. If you do have both Zetas, then that's probably a draw. So it kind of almost forces you to do Zetas if you're going to keep running Thrawn. That, or you find a way to gain turn meter with TIE Fighter Pilot, or cause him to lose turn meter with Gauntlet. I don't really like either option much either, because it's just annoying that like, hey, no matter what happens now, basically they're going to kill one of your ships before you kill one of theirs, or even vice versa. Then that's going to put them on a cooldown. It's burn two Zetas and then flip a coin to see if it happens with you first or them first. So if we might see Thrawn. We might see some different plays other than Thrawn now, which I hope. Spell debuffs and target ally. They recover 50% health, 50% protection, and all allies gain advantage for two turns. Yep, yep, yep. That's the same one. Yeah. Akbar buffs a little bit more. Executrix. This one is turning whenever any ship is destroyed. Really? Really, 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 really. I like it. I like that. Oh, of course, we don't see ships get destroyed as much anymore. All right, 30% damage. Whoop, whoop. Physical damage to all enemies with a 70% chance to ability block for one turn. Yep. Oh, plus 30% exposed chance. So he's got 80% chance to expose on all debuffed enemies. Um, just gets resisted. Um, they gave that more damage. I don't know that it really needed. It was already pretty crazy. But, and, again, 30% turn meter offense up for one turn. Yeah. I'm not going to rank. I mean, so far these all look to be kind of draws. Correct me if I'm wrong. I never really read their abilities that closely because they just do what they do on there. All right, so Mace, though, on there. So I should apparently um, level his stuff up and get him up there. Where did he stop before? Because all allies gain protection up 150% for two turns, which can't be prevented or dispelled. Well, how would you pre prevent protection up? Buff immunity? Does that mean he gets a round buff immunity? And retribution for two turns. This ability starts on cooldown. Really? Well, I mean, it, it makes sense it would start on cooldown. That's pretty strong. And you flip target lock for two turns. So yeah. Look how much this is going to... 150,000 for these. Oh, they made us burn our ship credits. Physical damage target enemy, all enemies affected by target lock and grant valor. This is the same. Yeah, it just does more damage. That, nothing changed there. Eyes of Protection at 15% offense and defense. Just doubled for Galactic Republic allies. 
Russian Ski Valor. Grant the endurance. Yep, 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 yep. And what's his ulti do? Wait, what? Target only recovers 100% protection and gains taunt critical on for two turns. They changed his ulti? Where is it? Where is it? It's this. Is it this? Is it this? It's this. That they changed the ulti. That's what Pyro was talking about on there. So do we like protection up 150% for two turns, which can't be prevented or dispelled? Here that it can't be dispelled. If it means if prevented means that it gets around buff immunity, that's nice too. And they gain retribution for two turns. Do we like that better than the critical than the damage immunity? Yes, we do. Because 150% protection up is basically like damage immunity for two turns. I mean, you're not going to burn through that. And then they all get retribution. Mace, arguably the weakest capital ship making a comeback. I said I wasn't going to list capital ships on there because I didn't see anything that big. Mace. Where's Mace's great? Where is he? Mace gets a buff. Yeah, gets a buff for sure. All right. That's our list. That's everything. I hate the new quest thing because just stop showing me all the ones. Just show me my energy. Just give me my energy. I hate it. I hate it a lot. What do we get in the inbox? Don't care. I think I already looked at those. All right, guys. Um, those that stuck with the whole time, I hope that it was fun. Give me license to air server, bro. Um, no? I don't know. I don't even know who you are. Who sent a deep? Is that one of us? <laughs> I just literally paid $20 to do this broadcast on there because my free license had run out. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm out.